Today we'll be having a, a brief introduction to hormonal communication. So homeostasis is uh, a maintenance of our internal environment relatively stable through negative feedback. That is something that our body does to keep everything the same, basically. So things like our blood glucose level, our body temperature, and the uh, water levels in our blood. Now, in chapter 13, you would know that uh, one of the ways that we could do that is by the nervous system. The nervous system is able to detect certain changes in the body and then through electrical impulses to, um, to signal other parts of the body to make a response. So, for example, our muscles we are mainly controlled by or stimulated by the nervous system to do certain actions. The thing is, the other way in which that we'll focus on today is the endocrine system. And the endocrine system is basically the system where they release hormones. So the endocrine system is made up of endocrine glands, which are tissues that can uh, release chemicals. Specifically, they can release hormones into the blood plasma. Uh, and it's important to sometimes to uh, refer the, to the fact that the hormones can go into the bloodstream and they travel through the bloodstream to their target cells. And the reason why these target cells are the ones that can respond to the hormones and not just any other cell is because they have receptors on them. And these receptors tend to be specific to a particular type of hormone, meaning that they can coordinate a very particular response based on what hormones uh, is being received at that point. So that is the endocrine system. Now, what we're going to be thinking about in this uh, video is focusing on what are the different types of hormones uh, that we have. Specifically, there are two general types, and then uh, because of their different properties, they can do slightly different functions. So uh, here is a general outlook of, uh, of, of a specific part of a cell. So here we've got the cell surface membrane. We've got a particular protein and a receptor on that. And then also we've got the nuclear membrane or the nuclear pores there and then DNA inside. Uh, in drawing this out, we can illustrate uh, the two different types of hormones. The first type I'm going to talk about is the peptide hormones. So uh, in this case, an example of a peptide hormone would be adrenaline. And as you know, adrenaline usually is released during uh, fight or flight responses or stress responses, uh, but we'll come back to adrenaline in another time. But in this case, it's a peptide hormone, meaning it, uh, it is hydrophilic and it can't pass through the cell surface membrane because it's got a hydrophobic core. And that's why it can bind to the cell surface membrane here through the receptor uh, that is attached to protein that can uh, cause other signals. Uh, so usually in this case we say that the peptide hormone is, or this adrenaline, is the first messenger because it's the, it's the one that carries the signal in the first place. And then what happens is in the case of adrenaline, this uh, protein is actually an enzyme called adenylcyclase. And adenylcyclase is actually an enzyme and it can convert some signals. It can change ATP into cyclic AMP. So through the binding of the hormone, it will activate the adenyl cyclase to turn it into to turn ATP into cyclic uh, AMP, which is what we call a second messenger. And the cyclic AMP is then able to actually go and cause an enzyme cascade. What that means is uh, an enzyme cascade refers to a series of different enzymes that are being activated one after the other. So cyclic AMP, for example, could activate a protein kinase, which is then activated to activate another enzyme, and then that enzyme activates another enzyme, and etc, etc, until the enzyme that they activate can actually do the actual reaction that they want. So for example, it could be, in this case, converting glycogen into glucose for more respiration to occur. So this is the action of usually of a peptide hormone. Now the other type of hormone is uh, called steroid hormones, which are lipid based or lipid soluble. So an example for that would be uh, estrogen. So because they are lipid based, they will be able to uh, actually just simply diffuse across the membrane um, here because they are basically of the same chemical. So they can just diffuse across like this and it enters the cell. Uh, so, and in this case, uh, the, the receptor uh, would actually exist inside the cell in the cytoplasm. So, for example, this one here. This is the steroid hormone receptor. And uh, once they're together, obviously, the steroid hormone receptor would bind to the uh, actual estrogen, and then they will, they will be able to do various functions. And in the case of estrogen, they can actually pass through the nuclear, uh, nuclear membrane. 
So in the case of estrogen, when they bind to the receptor, they become a hormone receptor complex. And in their case, they actually become a transcription factor, meaning they can actually activate or upregulate or downregulate transcription of the DNA. So these are the two types of uh, hormones, peptide hormones and steroid hormones. Later on in the chapter, we'll come back to the action of adrenaline and see how they actually are made in the first place and also how they can actually uh, do the enzyme cascade.